Welcome to the first semester of Anatomy and Physiology. This first lecture is meant to introduce you to what anatomy and physiology mean and how they relate to each other. So anatomy simply means the structure of something. What does it look like? Uh, memorizing vocabulary, identifying structures. This is what we learn first, the anatomy. Here you see a drawing of a heart and you can see sort of the large structures, the valves, the um, chambers, the vessels. Those are what we call macroscopic anatomy, large parts. And to the right of it, you can see microscopic anatomy. That's a cutaway of a portion of the heart wall. And you can see the cells and various tissues that make up that heart wall. So anatomy refers to the macroscopic or the microscopic structure. What does it look like? The physiology, on the other hand, is the function of something. How does it work? What does it do? So on the last page, we looked at the structure of the heart. What does it look like? On this page, this is a graph talking about the function of the heart. How does it beat? How does it contract? And you can see the electrical impulses and the pressure changes in the chambers and various vessels. So this is usually a series of steps that have to happen so that the structure can do its job. And in anatomy and physiology, we study the structure and then those series of steps that make it do its thing. But anatomy and physiology are pretty closely related. The anatomy of a structure determines its physiology. Another way to say this is that the structure of something is really important to the job it does. To demonstrate this idea, think about different types of knives. This is a paring knife. It's small and pretty agile and it fits easily in your hand. You would use this for maybe peeling an apple or coring a strawberry. This is a butcher knife. It is pretty heavy and pretty large. They have a different structure so you can predict that they probably have a different function. You wouldn't want to try and hack apart a piece of meat with a paring knife, and you wouldn't want to try and, I don't know, peel an apple with a butcher knife. The structure helps each knife to do a different task. So we have the structure and the function, and that's what we study in this class. We will start each topic by learning the structures and what things look like, and we will use that information to help us remember and understand the function. There's a final piece of information that will be important though, and it is related to both structure and function, and that is location. As you move through this course, make sure you are learning what things look like, where they can be found, and how they work. Let's look at an example of how function is related to structure and location. In a couple weeks, we're going to be learning about tissues. Here you can see two different types of tissues. One has a single layer of cells. The other has many layers of cells. Take a minute and think to yourself, which one, based solely on looking at their structure, what do they look like, would be better at protecting underlying layers of tissue? And which one, just by looking at the structure here, would be better at allowing materials to pass through it very quickly. So if you said the top one would allow things to move through it quickly, you'd be right. That's a process known as diffusion. And if you said the bottom one would be better at protecting um, tissues underneath, you'd be right, that's protection. So see how the structure is going to help them do their job. Not only that, but these relate to the location. Where would you find these tissues in the body? So the one that's supposed to protect you would be found in the skin. And an example of one place where you would find cells that allow things to go through them very quickly might be the walls of the alveoli in your lungs. And this makes sense, right? You wouldn't want a single layer of cells being the only thing protecting the inside of your body from the environment outside, right? And you don't want a huge, thick wall of cells blocking oxygen getting from your lungs into your bloodstream. So now we see the relationship between structure, 
function and location, let's look to see how the course is set up. Our bodies are made up of trillions of cells, all doing different things to keep us alive. It can be organized into different levels of organization, from the smallest, most microscopic level, all the way up to organ systems, such as the cardiovascular system or the respiratory system. When we learn AMP, we start at the bottom and we work our way up to the more complicated levels. In chapter two, we're going to study the structure of the smallest unit of matter, atoms. And then we're gonna see how their structure determines what types of bonds they make to create larger molecules. When you create enough molecules and put them together, it forms the next higher level of organization, the cellular level. So in chapter three, we'll learn about cells. Two or more types of cells form a tissue, which is the tissue level, and we're gonna learn about that in chapter four. Two or more types of tissues forms an organ, and multiple organs working together form an organ system. There are 11 organ systems in the body, and we cover the first four organ systems in AMP1. The rest we'll cover in AMP2. I'll let you read more about these levels and the different organ systems in your textbook, but just remember, the structure of something is related to its function, and its function depends on its structure. Finally, the function must make sense with the location. These ideas will help you put all of the stuff you are about to learn about in context. Good luck, and I look forward to seeing you in class.